Now it's starting to feel like SEMA. We have lifted trucks. Hey, big monster truck. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, SEMA. You always, you always see the slammed cars and the, the trucks that you can walk under. Big so trucks, we're, yeah. We're, we're bringing, and look, I, I even dressed out in my SEMA attire. I see that. You got the SEMA shirt going So on. that way it's the last day of SEMA for virtual SEMA or canceled virtual SEMA, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, so I had to dress appropriately this is today. SEMA replacement. A SEMA replacement. And uh, obviously we have some something big that you're going to be doing today. Yeah, big Ford. Well, you know, Yancey, this is a real common problem. What's one of the major surfaces you see on the front of this truck? Uh, plastic. Black plastic. You know, this is why I like old trucks. They got a chrome bumper. <laughs> New trucks got ugly plastic, plastic bumpers. But... There's a way to make them look beautiful again, and we're going to show everybody how. No, well, you're going to show them. I'm just going to show them on the other side. So yeah. you, your labor and <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go this way. Okay. Uh, and we. Oh, also I forgot. Let me. Let me. Forgot. We're also going to be giving some of this stuff away at the end. So uh, three lucky people are going to win a little black diamond trim restore kit. You know, at SEMA, uh, Yancey's right. There's a lot of lifted monster trucks on display there. And there's actually a lot of classic lifted trucks there. And the one thing that separates the classic trucks from the new trucks is the amount of chrome they had versus the amount of plastic that modern trucks have. But that's the card we've been dealt, so we have to deal with it. Yeah, and it's and also the, the times of the, you know. Yeah, chrome's kind of went away and uh, manufacturers all went to this. Is Technically what this is called, in case anybody doesn't know, this is called pebble textured black plastic trim, or in this case, cladding and I don't know if you can zoom in and see this but it's not smooth it's got a grain to it and it's it's a small grain uh, so this it's called pebble textured and one of the big problems with pebble textured plastic and a lot of you detailers know what I'm talking about if you were buffing say the fender next to this plastic and you accidentally run the polisher over and get compound polish or a wax on there, it's going to stain it. And because it's textured, it'll almost be impossible to sometimes get that out of there. So that's why when wherever we're detailing around this type of material, it's always a good idea to tape it off. Or if not, it'll be a pain <laughs> in the butt later. Yeah, it's, uh, it's faster to tape it off than it is to uh, try to clean it later on. But what happens is this plastic trim, when this Ford truck was brand new, it probably looked great. And, but what happens is it oxidizes, just like the, the headlights, the plastic oxidizes. And oxidation is a process of, uh, it's kind of complicated to explain, but what it is is there's free radicals in the air around us, and somehow they magically pull the molecules of the surface they're around off of it, and it's, it, it deteriorates is the, what happens. But it's the oxidation process of deterioration that pulls molecules of the thing off and then what happens is it turns in black plastic what it does is it kind of turns gray and it's oxidized it's ugly is and, it like um, the the chemicals leaching out of it is no it it's is just it's just breaking down is you know? it it's oh, just, so it's the plastic's just, actually breaking down yeah it's just like you and me we're breaking down and the, head, the headlights <laughs> breaking down you know if you throw a newspaper outside and just let it sit there in the sun it breaks down it's just just things break down. I think it's the second law of entropy. Everything is in a state of chaos or breaking down continually all the time. Nothing really gets better and better and better except for wine, you know, as you <laughs> age it. But then if you open it and drink it, then it quits getting better. So yeah, then, then you just everything else in. just gets worse and worse with time. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we got this black plastic here. And I don't know what year this truck is, but it's definitely you know, starting to fade and look ugly. I mean, it takes away from the beautiful white paint that's still in pretty good shape. So the trick to uh, taking care of black plastic, to, to be real honest with you, is actually if you buy a new car, a new truck, a van, or a SUV, and it has any kind of black plastic trim, right then and there, find a product you like and start taking care of it. And that's called? Uh, preventing the maintenance. There you go. Yeah, and um, and that way it, it won't get to the point where it's ugly. So here's what normally happens. People buy something new and because it looks good, they don't do anything. And it looks good the next day, the next week, the next month, and for a couple years. But at the, at that, or this time frame, that plastic is actually aging and fading. And it isn't usually until about two or three years down the road, you go outside, you wash your rig, whatever it is, and then you stand back and look at it and go, you know, that plastic 
It's not looking good. Well, it didn't happen that day. It happened slowly over time because you didn't do anything. So I'm just giving you a piece of advice. You know, Yancey, I taught a class on how to restore black plastic trim at we Mobile Tech about Expo. That. Yep. And um, I got to tell you, it was one of the most boring classes I ever taught because most guys that are in the detailing, they like to do paint correction, you know, it's, or It's interior. not the, the glitzy, glammy it's part of the detailing. not glamorous, okay? And, but it's important. It's an important aspect if you're a well, detailer to know how to take care of well, plastic look at or how, store it. how much black plastics are on the front of that. So, I mean, a it ton, takes up, yeah. like, almost half of the real yeah. estate on the front. So. But, but whether you're a detailer or the car owner, you need something to use. But it, take my advice. Just find something and start using it when it's brand new. So that means, say you have a brand new car, you wash it. Take a product like I'm going to show here, the Pinnacle Black Label right, here, let me get Ceramic Trimmer Store. All right, let me zoom in. Real easy to use. In fact, when it's new and in good shape, it's super fast and easy to use. And start using it. And if you do that when the car's brand new, it will never get to the point where it's faded and ugly. And then if you go to sell it or trade it in, you know, it just adds to the value. You've maintained the appearance, so the value will be preserved. Uh, and plus, the other thing is, is if you let this go really bad, part of restoring trim isn't just wiping something on. It's getting it clean first, and that means elbow grease. Scrubbing. Oh, you mean those magical products that we see at late night TV? <laughs> they 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 don't really work. Well, you know everything kind of works to a degree, but still, the, the, to really do the job right, you've got to remove some of the oxidation and get it clean, and that means scrubbing it with the cleaner. You got to get it clean. That way, the product I'm going to show you, the, there's actually a dye in there can get into the plastic because you got to understand. Plastic doesn't absorb well anyway. So in order to get a dye into it, you gotta first remove all the oxidation and get it clean, any road grime, any road film. That way the dye can get into it. And of course the ceramic protection is gonna seal it and lock it in to make it waterproof. So basically we're getting it down to a fresh base. A fresh base, yeah. All right. So let me just go ahead and talk about the product. What this is is the Pinnacle Black Label Ceramic Trim Coating. So there's a lot of products on the market for black plastic trim. Most of them are addressing or a dye, and this is kind of both of them put together, only it's advanced because it's ceramic. And everybody knows one of the cool things about ceramic coatings for paint is how long it lasts. Correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, it just outlasts wax and sealants. Same thing with this here. It's going to last longer than a dressing or just a standalone dye. So it's taken the best of uh, ceramic protection, the longevity, the waterproofing ability, but also taken the dye and restoring that deep, dark, rich color that really creates the contrast that makes your vehicle look good. So that's how this works. In fact, you can get up to two years of protection because it's got the ceramic component in it. So the first thing we need to do to restore this though is we need to clean it. Now that's where the Pinnacle Black Label Diamond Surface Prep Spray comes in. All right, let me get you a big frame here and I'm going to zoom in. All right, so this is going to clean the surface yeah, and this remove is, any oils and everything like that. Yeah, correct? so this is a panel wipe basically. And you can also, first of all, you'd want to start out by washing your vehicle. So just using the car wash soap to really get it clean. I'm going to go all the way back here. We'll do a little tape line. Everybody loves the tape line. If it's really Before dirty, you know, take any kind of brush and, and really scrub that hard. And that is really the key. Yeah, don't, you know, don't sand with the brush, people. <laughs> yeah. And, well, you know, in my detailing classes, what I show is machine scrubbing. We throw yep. a brush on something like the... Uh, flex PE14 cordless or a cordless drill and get in there machine scrub. That way, you know, you're saving your arm muscles. But the machine always does a better job than the human hand. Because Mike doesn't like working by hand. <laughs> <laughs> Some people think I'm OCD. What they don't understand is OCD can be confused with just being lazy. <laughs> Find any way that's There, faster. you heard the truth right here, people. Okay, so I've scrubbed that with the brush. Put a little bit more on here. I'm going to just take a microfiber towel. Doesn't this come in the kit we're giving away? Yes, it does. You okay. actually, I think you get four towels. If it's not in bad shape, you could just do it like this. Just spray it on and then aggressively go in there and just really wipe that good with your microfiber towel. Yeah, and this is something you don't want to do if you just went mudding the night before. Well, wash your vehicle yeah, first. Just make sure that you get all that mud off. Okay, so that cleaned up pretty good. Now... I'm going to take and put a tape line down here just so you can have that dramatic, I love this word, demarcation line. Ooh. The, the line between before and after. Ooh. i got to have a sound effect for that. For demarcation line? <laughs> there you go. I did triangle for you. <laughs> okay. Triangles. Symbols? <laughs> okay, here we More go. More cowbell. 
Okay, now I'm also going to want to take and um, I want to push this on really hard because I've done this before. What happens is that it dye leaches in. Well, it kind of wants to leach over, and I yeah. want to keep that line. So I just want to make a really strong demarcation line. Okay. So you don't have to do this at home. This is just for effect. Okay. <laughs> so then the next thing, this is actually pretty simple, but you do want to wear gloves. Now, this dye, if you get it on the paint or the plastic or something else, it's not a big deal. It will wipe off. It's actually meant to go into and onto the plastic. But put some nitrile gloves on. And here at AutoGeek, we sell all this stuff. Except for the hand. We do not sell the hand. <laughs> at least not yet. Not yet. <laughs> you know, government regulations kind of frown on us going around. Okay, like, you don't need there, now hand. I look like a detailer. I'll stop. Okay. <laughs> okay, now the kit's going to come with a microfiber applicator block. Okay. And what's nice about this is just microfiber, when it comes to coatings for paint, plastic, glass, anything, they really just help you to spread the product out really well. So there, they, there is a benefit to this. All right, before you get started, when you go doing everything, just do it right there by the bumper. Uh, so that way I can have it zoomed in so the people at home can watch this and sure. I'm not driving them all over the place. Gotcha. Okay, so here we're shaking. Shake well. And then what you want to do is uh, take your applicator block and then just go ahead and put some no, of this. No, up a little bit. Up, up, up. There you go. Put some of this on just to one side of it. All right, can you show the camera about how much? There, there we you go. go. All right. And after you do this initial wetting of the microfiber, applicator pad, then you'll use a lot less product as you work around. And look how massive this is. This is going to take some product. Okay, then it's just a simple of application oh, process. And, and I recommend working this in really well. Seeing now are you the, pushing hard? Or? Oh yeah, I'm pushing this. I want to push this into that plastic. You know, okay. I, I cleaned it really well. I scrubbed it. I wiped it. I used plenty of the prep spray to really get in there and get it clean. All right, now is it, um, is there like you should do crossing, uh, overlapping passes one way, then go the opposite direction well, or? Yeah, good question. You know, it all, it, the, the thing about using a, um, a cross hash pattern or something like this is let's go back to that, um, the concept of this being a pebble textured grain. It's a grain. So when you push it in different directions, you're coating and getting into that grain in different directions. And you're, that's just helping you to get a more uniform appearance. Then after you apply it, you just want to take a microfiber towel, wipe off any excess, and then check out the difference. And that is how you can take and, whoops, wrong product, restore your black plastic trim to look like new. Now this is the last, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this. Is that okay with you? Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. So, now can you put uh, multiple coats on? You can, after the first coat kind of sets up, you can come back, put a second coat on. You know, uh, this is one of our coworkers, Chuck Yancey, before we leave today, we actually got to finish the whole thing, so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, doing a cross hash pattern, that way you really work that dye into the surface there. And, um, but it'll last about two years, and then uh, it'll also leave it waterproof. So now, one of the biggest complaints I see about dressings is they, um, is they tend to wash off in the rain. You get a good hard rain, wash a few cars times, you actually see it running down the side of the vehicle. But this here is going to dry to a dry, it won't be tacky, it's going to dry and then it'll be waterproof. So that's really the component, the ceramic part of it that actually helps it to hold up for the next two years. Okay. Now, do you need to wipe that off yep. or do you need to? I'm trying to answer all the questions here. Well, I haven't got to the question part yet, but I just want to make sure that. Now, is, oh, that was actually brings me to a good thing is. Um, should you work on this in direct sun, out of direct sun? Um, oh, well, yeah, I should do stuff out of direct sun if you can. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, here in Florida, if you go outside to wash a car, you're pretty hard not to do it in direct sun, so start early in the morning, that kind of thing. All right, now, um, is there any other, like, the uh, tips and tricks about, you know, if you get it on something, should you, you know, immediately wipe it off? There's some up there on the plastic there, just a little bit on the headlight. So I'm just going to come up here and I think I can just take it there. You use the cleaner to get it off? If yeah, a little bit of the cleaner just to wipe that off. But it'll, it, it will just wipe off paint. Okay. That was a quick and easy demo. 
Yeah, there's not a lot to this. And then, of course, you just work your way around the rest of the car. It's not a complicated process. And uh, like I say, most guys like to focus on paint correction and that aspect of detailing the car. But it is important to also take care of all the black plastic trim. And like we said, this thing has a lot of it. Now, there's actually a lot of plastic up here on the cowl. The okay. rear Yeah, and if mirrors. you look back here, the mirrors, the door handles. Um, around the uh, window back here, and there's a cap on the top of the bed there. Now, could people also use this for like the hard tonneau covers? Uh, if it's plastic, you could. If it's vinyl, you know, flexible vinyl, then there's probably other products out there that work a lot better. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I don't know what else uh, that you really can show about that. Was there any questions? <laughs> oh, I got questions over here. I was just trying to get through all your little um, <laughs> things, so. Do, 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 do. Yeah, no, I so a few minutes have gone by, I'm just going to put a second coat on there. Okay, then while you're doing that, I'm going to go to viewer questions. You ask, Mike answers. All right, so here we go. Let's bring us up into, let's go to the picture in picture here. Yeah, look how much darker that gets with the second coat. Well, that's another one. If you layer it, will it actually get darker? Put that dry. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But again, you know, the, really the best thing to do is you get something with a black plastic trim, and a lot of SUVs have this. Is just, you know, within the first year at least, try to find you know something you like, something like this, and after you wash and dry the car, just go around and hit the trim. It doesn't take that long. Okay. And uh, and that'll keep you from having to uh, endure ugly faded trim, and it also doesn't mean you got to try to restore it before you use the product. And that's where most people don't have the skill, the ability to restore ugly trim. They, anybody can wipe something on, but when, once it turns gray and it was black at one time, that's where it gets kind of hard to remove that oxidation. It's not like paint that oxidizes. You can compound and get it off. Plastic, about the only thing you can really do is scrub it with some kind of APC and a brush, and that's about it. And there are differences. There are some, because I know, um, all right, let's go this way. There is some of that plastic that is actually a gray. It's not yep. really a black. Now, will this actually, if you were to use this on that, would it turn it black or would it just make yeah, it a it, deeper gray? It would turn it black. You it would, know? Turn it would kind of blend in and turn it black. There's also, you know, I remember Ford had some brown plastic trim on some of their cars, so you couldn't use this on that. Okay. All right. Um, let's go to Mike's Auto Detailing. Uh, can you use this on wheels or wheel wells? Uh, if it's plastic, you could. It's really for plastic. Uh, so the wheel wells, like a lot of cars have a, uh, a plastic fender flare. So you could use it on there, say a Jeep or Mini Coopers, things like that. Okay. Um, up inside of the wheel well, it is plastic, so you could. But um, there's cheaper ways to take and turn that black, like uh, aerosol. Plastic dressings are usually pretty good for that okay. or something like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've never been a big wheel well detailer. I know it's important to a lot of people, but I've always lived where it rains a lot. And so if you go ahead and detail weird. and make it look pretty and drive in the rain one time, one, it's, one like, time it's, done. it's all for nothing. Yeah. So. Uh, this one I thought was funny. John Walls, don't teach people to take care of their car right away. Then they'll know the secret <laughs> of having the nicest car in town. I don't want competition. Gotcha. Well, that's funny. Yeah. true, true, well, true. Auto Geek, that's kind of what we do is we cater to both the enthusiasts and the professionals. But also, we want to educate people. That's the main thing, customer service education. That is what we, we are known for. Uh, David Sherman, nice to meet, my, nice to see Mike wearing gloves. Oh, yes. <laughs> he is. Being safe. I, I think it's just because he doesn't want black fingers. Uh, oh, here's the, another one. Uh, does going over the plastic really make it ba uh, black again like the videos that show online? Yes, it does. Well, and it brings a kind of a luster back well, to it, too. Well, this product here has a, has a pigment in it. So, yes, it's going to make it black again because it's actually putting a pigment onto and to some level into the plastic. So addressing, uh, and this isn't addressing, this is a ceramic dye is what it is. Now, a dressing will make dull plastic dark again because it's typically putting some kind of Slip oily, stick. well, oily product. Yes. I don't know if it's silicone or what, but it's, it's putting something oily wet on there, and so it penetrates in and it changes it to a nice, nice dark color. The problem is, is they just don't tend to hold up very long when exposed to frequent rain or washing, because your washing also has soap in it. So it's going to start breaking it down. Not a big deal. Put some more on. This is just going to last longer. Okay. Well said. It's the waterproofing component. 
Okay, uh, Mike's auto detailing again. Uh, would using a heat gun help getting into the pores? Uh, yeah, you know, anytime you heat something up, it's going to expand it, so that would make it easier to get in. Um, it, you know, it's That's real a double-edged sword there, because well, it's, it's going to no, be hotter, it's going to dry quicker. No, it's real easy for uh, us detailers to take something that should be really simple and make it really complicated. And, um, you know, no. if you just clean it and apply it and call it good. Um, what I don't want to do is I don't want a lot of uh, just enthusiast people that own a car out in the front driveway with a hair dryer heating another plastic cup. You know, and there is that old thing where a lot of people take, and take a heat gun and actually take faded plastic and they heat that up and it has this magical it ability yep. to turn it original. But what you just did is it's a very short-lived cosmetic fix and it's yeah. actually going to go back to the way it was and it's going to be worse off than before you started. Yeah, the I right way to do it, follow me. The right way to take care of plastic is when it's brand new and in good shape, find a product you like and start using it. That's the right way. Don't wait till it turns ugly, then try to save it. If you've waited too long, here's a product that'll put it back to right to get it black again. All right, let's go to TJ. Uh, will the dye remain kind of spotchy or will it level off somewhat? Um, it, it will level off after you wash it one time. You know, any excess will come off there. Um, one thing about this is this bottle here is the first bottle when we first introduced this that I've had in my, in, in my inventory. So it's, it's probably getting older. And just like any ceramic, you want to open it, use it. It's not going to last forever. All right. Uh, here's another one. James, uh, what is the curing time, if any? Uh, probably just like anything else. You know, you want to wait 24 hours before you put it back the vehicle back into service, let it get wet or start to touch it. You know, it's a, it's a ceramic, so you want to let it set up. Okay. Uh, we have Sebastian. He's saying hello, hello. Uh, Ivan Jack, he uses a solution finish and gets great results. We know Chris West over there. He's, he's Make some good quality products. And, and product. Solution Finish is a product that the same thing, just like I said, you got to clean the plastic well first, put the Solution Finish on, and then you're supposed to put a dressing over it. Solution Finish isn't a dressing, it's just a pigment. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to use something over it, and you could use this over it. Okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Uh, let's go here, David. Scrub with the green Brillo pads. As long as it isn't scratched, the green Brillo pads, you know, uh, th those are pretty aggressive. Test spot. Yeah. <laughs> do a test spot if you're going that yeah, route. Yeah, do a test spot. I'd, I'd tend to, yeah, th that'll work. But the thing is, is they actually can mar. That's the word. You okay. can mar the plastic. And once you mar plastic, you can't There's really. There's no going back. <laughs> you can't undo it. You, know? you better Just, make it uniform. <laughs> well, pebble texture, it's a texture. It's a uniform pebble texture. And if you start rubbing it with something too hard and mar it, you're never going to get back to that textured surface because you started to level it, basically. Well, I know that's your favorite texture surface I to work hate on. Pebble texture. <laughs> I always tell people that the scientist or the chemist or the engineer that came up with. Designer. Yeah, the, well, the engineer that created pebble textured plastic, because this would come out of mold. Uh, has never detailed a car. If he did, well, he'd I, go, he'd hate this stuff. Yeah, right. You know? Uh, here, actually, here's an uh, interesting question. I didn't even think, think about this one. Sherman Stevens, what about the rubber right under the window? Yeah, this isn't the right product for that. I, I've put it on there. You can't put it on there, it won't hurt it. It's not really the right product for that. There's not a whole lot of right products for that material. And again, let's go back to the car manufacturers. What they should be doing is, besides they should be building cars that the average person can work on the materials they make on the car, put on the car. It shouldn't even be like only a detailer can work on a car. Anybody should be able to work on their car, including that rubber that goes around the windows. Agreed. And the average person can't work on it. But usually something like that is actually in our Wolfgang line. We sell a product called um, Exterior Trim Sealant. Mm -hmm. um, people call it WETS, Wolfgang, mm -hmm. and Exterior Trim Sealant, so W-E-T-S. Oh, uh, I see what you did. It WETS, yeah. And, and the trick to that product, though, is just like... A plastic product. Well, the car's still new and in good shape, start putting it on. And every other time you wash it, just put it on. It only takes seconds, and it'll always look good. What most people do is they don't do anything for years, and that rubber oxidizes just like a headlight will oxidize. And once it starts to oxidize, it becomes texture, but not like pebble texture. It becomes texture because it's disintegrating. And now, nothing you rub on there is going to make it smooth and pretty again. You can restore the color, but now it's going to have that ugly texture to it. Um, I actually have taken, by way of a story here, um, a friend of mine had a, uh, I think it was a 2008 Honda that had never been detailed, and all that rubber trim around the windows looked absolutely horrible. And um, couple, for about a year, 
I would wash this car, and of course I detailed it. It had a hologram, so when I first saw it, so I buffed them all out. But I took that wets, and I took a piece of, a piece of terry cloth, okay? So I took okay. an old washcloth, cut it up, because terry cloth is a mild form of abrasive, and about a chunk about this big, put the wets on, and just start massaging it. Just okay. massage it, just massage it. it. And hey, it didn't look great the first time. Next time I did it, didn't look great. Next time I did it, it starts to improve. But after a year went by, it looked pretty damn good. Yeah. So it, it's not a quick fix because someone let 15 years go by before the next it's guy did, did something. something. Yeah, but really, when it comes to the rubber, vinyl, and plastic exterior trim and components, while the car's still brand new, find a product that you like and use it off. Start doing something to it I'm right there. I'm seeing a theme here throughout all these videos. Well, and this is why when I taught that class, it was so boring. Nobody even cared, you know, <laughs> it was at Mobile Tech Expo. I went out to the Rec Yard. I pulled all this plastic trim off different cars, different components that Actually, were all Actually, you're me with. into another question right here. So that, And then that's I showed good. guys how to machine scrub it and then how to restore it. And the whole point of that, I created this PowerPoint. And the whole point of that PowerPoint was the same thing I'm saying. Before it gets bad, start taking care of it. No, one, no one's ever going to do that, so that's why I, I never enjoyed that class. Nobody had any fun in that class. It's, there's no fun teaching class on plastic trim. Yeah, and here we are making a video. No, just joking. Well, you know, it's just, <laughs> I'm joking. Mobile I'm joking. Tech Expos. But what you just said. A lot more fun than plastic trim. Yeah, what, what you just said there yeah. actually leads me into David Sherman's statement, I guess you could say. Good to have two black resto products. Plastics respond different to different products. Have you, have you found that through? Yeah, you know, um, it, it, oh, it is. I definitely agree. It's good to have two or three different products in your arsenal if you're a detailer. So if one thing isn't working, you bet. Put the, try something else to see if you find something that works. And one thing about the automotive industry is, is it's always evolving. So it could be the plastic they use in 10 years from now will be totally different than the plastic we're using now. So everything's changed. The good news is, is chemical companies are always evolving with it. So... But, uh, but one thing about plastic, a lot of people don't know this, is um, anytime, um, anytime people can find a way to reincorporate something recyclable, because everybody wants to be politically correct and eco-friendly and recycling kind to save our earth, you know, if you think about it, it's really hard to recycle old plastic Coke bottles into the engine block. You can't do that. But you can recycle plastic into plastic. So um, that's just something that's always happening. So that's why the plastic's always changing on cars, inside and outside because they're trying to incorporate recycled materials, good or bad, that's just what they're doing. Okay, uh, Sebastian, we did answer this earlier. How long will it last? Um, it lasts up to two years. Manufacturer states up to two years. Yeah. I always tell people how long anything lasts depends on how you touch it. If we wash this thing with a brick, probably ain't gonna last very long. If we wash it with a clean microfiber wash mitt and a quality soap, probably gonna last a long yeah. time. Yeah, and if you're like in the middle of the Sahara Desert and sand's yeah. beating, aren't it? That's gonna oh, wear it down. Yeah. I lived in the Mojave Desert for a while, and it's a pretty tough environment. Yeah. Also, going through automatic car washes. You know, uh, the brush style automatic car wash, all you gotta do is look at a rental car that, like a lot of the big <laughs> rental car companies, they have their own automatic car washes on location. So when a car comes back, they run the car through this car wash to get it clean for the next person. And you can see the linear scratches. I thought that was a design feature in the yeah, paint. <laughs> in all the paint panels. Now, and think about it, if it's, if it's scratchy paint, it's removing paint. And, um, and, and it's gonna do the same thing to the plastic, to the headlights, to the glass, everything. It's gonna scratch it. So and that's why you can't run a coated or even a waxed or a car through a, a automatic car wash and expect it to hold up because it's just too aggressive. It's, it's a mechanical action on the surface. All right. Big old dog, after using it, does it need a protection topper? It is ceramic. It, it is the topper. topper. I mean, if you want to put something on top, you can, but well, it, you know, it, it uh, is the, is it, that will darken and top all in one. Yeah. Oh, here's another one. Keith Burgess, can you put a ceramic coating over the top of it after it cures? It is a ceramic coating. It is a ceramic coating. Okay. Mike's for real checked out right here. Oh, Rebel Landslide is great on plastic, not for everybody. All right. Uh, okay, do you just leave it wet on there or do you knock it down? Um, I went ahead and just kind of left that on there. I thought it had a nice deep dark look to it. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't mind trying a brand new fresh bottle. Mm -hmm. you know, in hindsight, when we decided to do this live, I grabbed a bottle I've had open for about six months. So um, I found it was drying a little bit faster than normally I'd expect. Okay. Uh, and we have Ian Jack. I love your name. Ian Jack, clean your mechanic incorporate. 
going to try this out. I like the ceramic addition. It does last. We've had a couple uh, other employees' cars that have just been <laughs> dedicated uh, to be used for videos and photos and stuff, and it seems to be lasting really well, and they're happy with it. Uh, While we're taking questions, I could start cleaning the rest of this bumper. And Actually, I think I'm done. I think that was the, the last one. Okay. I mean, this was going to be a quick video. I mean, this was... Uh, it's not like we had a lot to really discuss here. Let me just back through these one more time. Um, Big Old Dog says, thanks, these videos have been wonderful. Well, that's why we're here. We try to make things fun and entertaining and educational all in one. Uh, oh, we have a new message. Ding! Na, 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 na. Uh, Big Old Dog would like to know, a little bit off topic, have you tried Mother's CMX 3-in-1? Um, you know, I've never used that product. Uh, one of the things that's a challenge here at Auto Geek is we carry, I don't know, over... So much? We carry, some, like I heard sometime, one time 70,000 different products, you know. That could be from a brush to a roll of tape, but still it's a lot of stuff. For, and well, from the official commercial that I have out there, we have over 170 vendors with over 75,000 products. So. And, since we made that commercial, we've added probably, a lot more stuff. Probably. So it's hard to try and test out everything. Plus, you know, um, uh, for me, I, I never do mock-up. So if I'm going to use something, I tend to like to get a car that I'm actually going to do the whole thing. That way, when I write a review or talk to people about it, I can uh, share real-world information based upon real-world experience. I know in the YouTube world and even in the TV world, so much of that is mock-up. And um, I'm really an anti-mock-up kind of guy. So, uh, it's, but for that reason, you know, to think about bringing a car in here and trying everything we sell, it gets kind of overwhelming. <laughs> uh, here, I'll tell you this, though. Mothers makes good stuff. And we just did a review for one of their newer products, uh, their brand-new hybrid ceramic Sorry. line. Here's train and, um, uh, I'll tell you, that stuff works good. It's a nice product. I know it's on my car. If you watched the video oh, yesterday, yeah. um, well, after the video was done, in the comment section down below, I actually posted pictures of the water Mike, uh, the, Mike took some pictures I took of the water. I took it last night. It was raining on his car after we used the mothers. Just, yeah. Whoosh. And I, I drove it. And I mean, literally, as soon as I went around the corner and got to like three miles an hour, all the water just went shoop, right off. So, I mean, it's pretty amazing stuff. By the way, I'm not taking these off because as soon as we're done here, I got to do the rest of this. He, he's going back in there. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to say, this would be the kit, plus two of these. Two of these, four <laughs> towels. That haven't been used. And yeah, definitely. That, yeah, we're going to send you that. Everybody's <laughs> going to get that. And then you also get a bottle of the Trim Restore and also the Surface Prep Spray. Three lucky winners are going to be getting this kit. And, What's the hashtag? Uh, let's go hashtag PBL Trim. PBL Trim. That will be the hashtag. So if you want to be entered in to try to win one of these three kits, put it hashtag PBL trim down in the comments or the, or the live chat area, or uh, just uh, yell really loud. We might hear you. <laughs> uh, but other than that, we have two more videos coming today. And uh, we have Grills, which is going to be up next. And if you're seeing this in the replay, Go to the playlist. There's a whole bunch of other products that we've been showcasing this week. And at 5 o'clock, we're going to do an amazing demonstration showing the power of Blackfire One Step One on step. black paint. On black paint. Swirl out black paint. And it's going to be cool. So you want to tune in. So with that being said, how about uh, I push this button and you get back to work? Got it. Or how about I just sit here and, oh, no. and you, you go back to work? I want to get this done with. You, you, you sure? I yeah, mean, I'm kind of one of those paint correction guys. I'm not a black plastic trim restorer guy. Uh, okay, have so. fun.